Welcome, welcome to God's house. Yeah. Are you ready to worship? Yeah. Let me just say before we even have our evening prayer, we have been expecting God to send this beautiful lady, one of our members, that has not been here for a while. Yeah. Shirley Grantham. I told her that she was the most beautiful lady in this building. Amen. So if you disagree with me, you come and let me let you talk to her for a few minutes, and then you'll agree with me. Amen. So let me say, um, Denton Dial is going to speak to us tonight, one of our deacons. And I would say that he brought his boss, Sandy, <laughs> with him. Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe Sandy brought him. We don't know which way. That's the last word. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, Sandy, thank you for being here. Uh, any other visitors we got? I see some right there. My favorite young man, he's, he's, he's getting stronger every day, and he's getting stronger because God's got a plan for it. We love you. Glad you're here. Let's just go to God in prayer. Father, God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just saying thank you. God, if there's not one of us that could be here on our own. God, you made it possible that we could be here. God, you have allowed your Holy Spirit to come and to prepare the way. And God, you've anointed our speaker tonight to come and deliver the message. God, you've got a blessing for every person in this building. And God, we just want to say we love you. We're here to worship you. You bless every person, everything that will be done tonight. Let it be done in a way that will glorify you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
joy tonight? Amen. Amen. We have joy because we have victory in Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory tonight to face anything that Satan tries to throw at us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
got two quick announcements for you tonight. You guys get the first announcement because you're here early. So you get the privilege to hear the good things that's fixing to be happening. But I want to tell you, you're going to be seeing on Sunday, on October the 31st, Sunday night, we will be having a family fun night. And what we're planning on doing is what we call a trunk or treat. And basically what that entails is that you would volunteer to turn your trunk into a treat for the kids. So you would be responsible for decorating your trunk, getting your own prizes or your candy or whatever you want to give out. And you will back your truck up to where we tell you to sit and you will sit there at your trunk when it's time and you will give out your prizes and you can have a game if you want to, whatever you want to do. So I want you to be thinking about it between now and Sunday, because Sunday, Miss Rhonda Poncel is our director, and she's going to have a sign-up sheet. So you got a couple of days to think about it. You'll be the early bird. So there's Rhonda, count how many's here, because this will be how many cars is going to sign up early. Okay. <laughs> I really encourage you. It's going to be fun. This is the first time we've ever done it, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of ways for us to socialize and just have a good time. There will be food, so we will have that too, but it's just going to be a lot of fun. So be thinking about that between now and Sunday, and then Sunday she'll have the sign-up sheet out front. I also want to, I said two announcements. I lied. I got three. I also want to remind you <laughs> that about Hospice House. We haven't been advertising Hospice House, but as you know, this church... Um, gets a lot of supplies and stuff and we take them to the hospice house um, we've got everything from what food to material things whatever you think the families may need so don't forget to do that um, and I think Rhonda's gonna you're you're gonna take it this month Rhonda's gonna take it so we'll have something set up it's back here for right now but um, don't forget to bring hospice third thing is a little housekeeping and I'm sorry I have to say this but I don't know who's doing it, so I just have to make an announcement. Someone is cleaning the piano, and we don't know who's doing it, but I'm going to ask you to please stop. They're putting a chemical on it that's not supposed to be on it, and I can't get it off. So if you're doing it, I appreciate it. I appreciate that you want it to look pretty, but I'm going to ask that you please stop. That could be it too. I haven't thought of that. So whoever's spraying, just don't spray the piano because it's I can't it's, it's, I can't get it off, and I'm having to scrub. So, but other than that, we look forward to you doing this Sunday. So don't forget, tell everybody, sign up, give your trunk, and let's give Mr. Denton a hand. Actually, you're gonna come pray first, aren't you? Let's give Mr. Jimmy a hand. He's doing an outstanding job in Daddy's app, isn't he? Now, it's the fourth announcement. <laughs> hey, you church, go with her. church, it's a good announcement. I just want to thank everybody that brought food for the day, the day Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me let me just add to what George was saying. Tim Oliver lost his mother 
and went through that. He lost one of his men that worked with him, had a funeral today. And tomorrow, Maria is going for a back surgery in Savannah. So we need to keep Tim and his family uh, in our prayer. Let me just say, if you don't think that God hears your prayers, I want you again to look around at Shirley Grantham. The devil is not happy she's here. God preserved her, gave her strength. She never quit desiring to be in this house to worship God. And I'm just so thrilled that God had showed an answer to his prayer right there. Uh, Miss um, Shirley will be driving Christy home. Christy said she doesn't really follow directions good. <laughs> so please pray for Shirley so she can keep that on the right track. Continue to remember Diane Blunt. She has got bronchitis really bad, along with the other things. Continue to pray for her. I was going to say pray, pray for Mary's knee. She's having trouble, but she stood up, okay? We can say thank you, God, for that. Um, continue to remember Ernest, David, and Walter. And remember to pray for our nation. Our nation is in such a confused mess. But it's not too big for God to bring it back in. So as we go to God in prayer, those prayer needs that you have, please lift them up as we pray. Father, God, once again, we stand in your presence because you said that when there was two or three of us coming in, you would be here in our midst. So, God, I know that you're here. And when we make these announcements, God, for needs, you already know them. You know everything that goes on in our body. And God, what amazes me, you're a God that always hears, always responds, and nothing is impossible for you. So God, we do lift up every name that was called every need that is being mentioned. God, for our nation, they are so full of confusion. God, I pray that you will just speak healing to every need that's in this house. And God, we're so blessed that you have touched or are continuing to touch our pastor. God, he, he ministers, I'm sure, times when he doesn't feel like it. But God is your servant, and he is here to preach your word. And God, I thank you for taking care of Danny as he heals. Continue to strengthen him. And God, thank you for every person that has put forth effort to fill in during his absence. I pray for Brother Denton tonight as he comes to bring what you've laid on his heart. God, you just bless him, speak through him, open our ears, open our hearts, and God, help us not to just hear the message, help us to carry the message 
to those who may be lost, those who are hurting, those who need your touch. And we just want to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 First, I'd like to say that it is a privilege to stand behind this pulpit. Uh, uh, we serve an awesome God. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, he was, he's, he's awesome from the day he created us. Uh, when he created the earth, uh, I can go into all kind of uh, details about other things, but he's laid something on my heart. But before I get to that, uh, some of you might not know who I am. Uh, uh, Diane Blunt that we just spoke about has bronchitis. Uh, she is my sister, my baby sister. Uh, she's six years older than I am, but still she's my baby sister. Uh, I have uh, three, bro three, other bro three brothers and uh, two sisters. I'm the biggest one of the bunch. Uh, I always told mom and dad they waited the last to have the best, and I wasn't lying, so there, so that. Uh, also, my wife Sandy is... Uh, is Ricky O'Berry's sister, uh, Ricky and Donna. So they're, they're, our, uh, they're my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Also, to give you a little bit of background, uh, this little boy was raised in, I'm not big, a little boy anymore, but when I was born, I was little. Uh, I was raised in the big city of Manor. We had one caution light. We still have one caution light, but instead of being in the middle, it's on the side there. Uh, but I was raised in Ware County all my life. Uh, the Lord blessed me uh, with uh, a college education that I did not have to, I had to borrow some money, but he, the Lord made a way that uh, after five years of teaching, I didn't have to pay that back. So uh, my first four years of college were free and got some of the money from the government. Do I uh, praise the government? No, I praise the good Lord, the good Lord. He took this little boy from Maynard that... Uh, in high school that was scared to get up in front of people. Uh, knees knocking, teeth chattering, tongue tied, everything else you want to say. But with his help, with the Lord's help, he's led and guided me when I would listen to him. I don't know if you have that problem sometimes, especially we men, not being um, male chauvinist pig or anything, we try to solve all of our problems. <laughs> and every time I've tried to solve them, guess what? I have to call on the good Lord to help, uh, to help me clean up the mistakes that I've made there. But anyway, the Lord has blessed me. Uh, I, I, I taught for seven years in Ware County. Uh, the other 24 and one-third, I was either assistant principal or a principal. During that time, there was, a lot, there was several years uh, in my career that I thought I wanted other jobs. I applied for them. And uh, back then, here again, it was, I don't know about you, but I have trouble with me, myself, and I. If I get me, myself, and I out of the way, uh, then the Lord, then I can listen to the Lord. Then the Lord really blesses me there. Uh, but as I said, I have uh, tried for other jobs or what I thought was a promotion. The Lord closed that door. Being human, what did I do? I pouted. Uh, I've learned not to pout uh, uh, so much. I still pout. That's, I think that's a male thing there as well. But uh, I pouted. But looking back on my life, my, my educational career, when, do when God, when the Lord closed one door, he had another door waiting for me in his own time, not my time, that was much better, much better than what I, the job that I thought I wanted. So the Lord has blessed me better, more than he has blessed anybody else in here. Uh, as I said, knee knocking, my knees are not knocking. Uh, it's been a few years since I've stood up in front of a crowd, but with the Lord's help, we'll get through this. We'll get through this. It's been on my heart. I kept looking and looking, so wonder what the Lord wants me to talk about. But tonight, we'll take a look at Psalms 139. We'll look at some of the verses. Don't know how far we'll get to go. This psalm is known as a personal thanksgiving from David. In the verses 1 through 16, I don't know that I will be able to get through all those, we will take a look at how God knows us intimately. Uh, he knows our actions. Uh, 
we'll find out that God's knowledge is unlimited. God is always near. God is leading us. God sees us all, everything that we do. Uh, David shows us that we are, and the last part, if we can get to it, God shows us that we're wonderfully made. Uh, one thing we could, if I've had to, to uh, give this uh, lesson or this speech uh, uh, a title, it would be our caring creator. He is a caring creator, isn't he? You know, he, he knew us before we were even thought of by, from our parents. He still knew us. And when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You were on his mind there. That's a good, awesome God that we serve. Uh, God, uh, David shows, that through, shows us through the psalm that he provides, uh, that God provides support and care we need. God wants to be close to us. Am I right? All right. As I said earlier, if I can get me, myself, and I, those are three most, those three persons, so to speak, are the, are the, one, are the persons that I have the most problem with. If I can get me out of the way, then I'm able to listen to the Lord and do what he wants me to do. Uh, Psalms 39 and 1, it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows our deepest uh, attitudes and motivations. There's many types of relationship between individuals this day and time. There's a social relationship that, you know, we may know names, we may know, may know maybe where they work and so on. There's casual relationships where uh, we know each other because of work or uh, et cetera. Friendly relationships, we know each other a little bit better. We know our, uh, if they're our friend, most of the time we know their likes and dislikes. And then there's their marital relationship. According uh, to the text I was reading, uh, this is the deepest and most intimate human relationship uh, that, shared, that we share our innermost feelings with each other. And then there's the Christian relationship with God. All of our attitude, assumptions, knowledge, our mind, our will, our emotions are all laid out before God who searches us and knows us and knows our innermost thoughts and feeling. God knows everything and, has, and he has known that forever and ever. In other words, what I'm trying to say, God knows us. Yeah. You know, we may think we can close the door and get... And uh, people might not see us. The pastor and I might not see us. Uh, uh, the, our family might not see us. But God sees us everywhere we go. And part of the, if we can get to that part of the lesson, he, he, knows, he knows even our thoughts, don't he? He knows our thoughts before we even think about it. In Psalms 139 and 2, it says, Thou knowest my downsitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought." Far off. There is no concealing our actions from God. He sees us when we are sitting down and when we are standing up, everywhere and all the time. And God knows our actions, basically, what I'm saying there. In Psalms 139 and 3, he says, Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. That sounds like he knows us pretty well, doesn't it? Compasseth mean, in this verse means, to circle, around, uh, to, uh, to circle around it or surround it also means complete com comprehending and understanding. In other words, uh, God knows about us all the way, even, they, even when we have those days. Poor old me, poor old me. As Brother Danny says sometimes and others, I think I, woe is me, I think I'll eat a can of worms. You know, this used to be a... a a song I think we used to sing back when I was a little boy, not a big boy like I am now. For, uh, for example, if we are full of pride or feeling of being in fear, God knows when the enemy of our soul has uh, lied to us and told us that we're superior to others. Have you ever thought that? Uh, back growing up, yeah, I, th I thought I was this good football player uh, until a... Uh, uh, a person, uh, we used to get out on Sunday afternoons and play football. And one of the things, uh, I thought I was a pretty good football player until a, a football player, from, an actual football player from Clinch County came, and it showed me that I wasn't the big football player that I was. 
Uh, I was used to playing with boys, other boys that weren't football players. So uh, he even knew me then when I said, boy, I'm a good, great, uh, I had pride. I was a great football player. But God tells us what to do with pride, doesn't he? It's right in that word. It's the three letters in between, uh, in between P and E. He wants us to get rid of it. There's no place in uh, God's high house for pride. Uh, also, the opposite of that is uh, when we know when the enemy of our soul lies to us and tell us we're no good, never be successful, that we're completely unlovable. If nobody else loves us, the Bible tells us God loves us. Amen. Jesus loves us. I don't know about you, but I, I am good at hiding feelings, my feelings, uh, from others. And sometimes if I don't watch it right now, that superiority will pop up. Or that inferiority. But that's nothing but a lie of the devil. Uh, when I say that, talking about superiority or inferiority, we need to know that we are, our, if we're a Christian, our soul is purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. Uh, the stripes that were put on his back were there for our healing. Uh, but we cannot hide these feelings no matter. Uh, we cannot hide those feelings because sometimes they pop up even now. I thought I, you know, hear me trying to take care of it myself of uh, feeling woe is me or man, look at me. I'm Mr. It. Uh, but we, I've often heard said here in other, other churches if you ever got a whooping, not a whipping, but a whooping from the Lord, that's worse than one, any one that my parents gave me. From the standpoint that uh, uh, that was, a, I still remember the times that, he, that the Lord whooped me. And it was, in, and when he whooped, whooped me, it was when I finally listened to him, he brought that to my attention that you don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be trying to solve all the problems. Because God is the great problem solver, isn't he? Yes. Jesus is the great problem solver. God knows every link we click on that uh, internet. That's a smaller one-eyed devil that uh, Brother Richard talks about. But it still can get you in trouble. Uh, he sees uh, every sneering and disdain, uh, disdainful look on our face. It's called a smirk, I think, is what we called it in Manor. And he overhears every remark, hurtful remark that we say. Uh, God lingers behind, though, and picks up the pieces of our mistake. God is the only one who can help us be transformed into a, an accepting and loving person in his kingdom. And knowing with complete confidence that as his child, we are accepted and loved by the creator. Uh, I remember one of the things, one of the partial verses or, is, uh, or the verse that I first learned as a small child, and I was small at one time, believe it or not, uh, was that God is love. You know, I would also remember the, the shortest uh, verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. So I do remember some things from, from my youth. You know, it tells us in the Bible that train up a child in the way it should go and that will, I'm paraphrasing, that will never leave him. Those times that my parents made me go to church, when I was little, I didn't have a choice in the matter. But as I got older, I thought, man, I'm Mr. Red. I don't need to go to church. But getting back to when I was smaller, um, in uh, the education course, a lot of the some of the education courses I took, uh, the brain... Uh, and we all know this if we've had small children. From ages zero through five, they're like a sponge. They soak up everything. Excuse me. Let me put this on. I'm not used to this.
Hear me now? (laughs) All right. But as I said, I always had a big voice. Uh, Even in school, I told somebody earlier, the corner of the classroom was my best friend growing up uh, because I liked to talk. And Who would have thought that I would ever become a teacher? Because teachers like to talk too. I found that out myself. But uh, we can know for certainly that someone who is unable to uh, speak can pray to our Heavenly Father and be heard by Him. Psalms 19 and 14, which is not, it's not going to be up on the screen, is a prayer for us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my, str- uh, my uh, strength and my redeemer. Uh, Christ, God, the Father, Christ, the Son, even the Holy Spirit is our strength and our redeemer. Even though Jesus Christ did, he was the one that actually died on the cross for our sins. Psalms uh, 139 and 5 says, Thou hast beset me behind and before. Lay thy hand upon me. Beset here means to hem in or to surround or put something on all sides. God has surrounded us with his love. He knows where we are and in, at all times and what we are doing. As I said, but getting behind a closed door, is uh, you may fool everybody all humans, but you're not going to fool God because he knows what we're doing, knows what we're thinking before it even comes out of our mouth. One thing, another thing is that God is always uh, near us. Psalms 139 uh, and 7 says, Whether shall I go from thy uh, spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence? One thing I, uh, in the book I was reading there, it said, There is no place we can go where God is not present. No place beyond the reach of Christ. He is ever present. There, and that's true. There's no place we can go uh, that God doesn't know us. God loves us. Thank the good Lord for that. God, does, God loves us. And those of us that were taught as a small child, sometimes, or like I speak for myself, I have gone astray, especially in my teenage years. But you know what? During those teenage years, something was tugging on my heart. You know what that was tugging on my heart? That, uh, and I know this is a pro- improper English, that learning I, I received as a small child. That stuck with me. And I'm fixing to turn 65 years old next year, or uh, no, not next year, next month. And uh, that still stuck, uh, that still has stuck with me. Um, and I hope, well, I know. Uh, not hope, I know that it will stick with me when I draw my last breath. In other words, there's no place we can go. You may run, but you can't hide. And that's what Psalmist Davis, I think, was saying there. We, you can run, you can try to run and hide, but you can't because God is all-knowing. He's, he's, he's what I classify as an awesome, awesome God. Psalms 139 and 8 tells us, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Uh, there are three realms referred to in this verse, heaven, hell, and the earth. Uh, and earth is the place where he would ascend or descend. Hell, in this instance, was referring to Sheol, or the place of departed dead. No, it wasn't the hell that we, you know, if we don't uh, uh, have a relationship with the Lord, it wasn't the hell that we'll people that don't have a relationship with the Lord uh, will go to. No matter where we go, God knows where we're at. You probably heard it said, well, you repeated that again, uh, time and time again. But it's true. He knows where we're at. He knows each one of us are here at church. He knows that, and he even knew before we showed up at church that we were going to be at church. In other words, what I'm trying to say uh, through uh, in this Psalm 139 that David was saying, he knows everything about us. Romans 8 and 38 uh, in the NLT translation uh, says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even uh, the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all 
creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you glad of that, of that verse, Romans 30 or 8, or excuse me, Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39? Aren't you glad that not only it speaks about it in the Old Testament, but it also speaks about it in the New Testament, that he will be there by our side? But there's one little uh, caveat to that is that if we, heal, if we allow him, Jesus don't, Jesus don't want just part of us. I said um, times before when I've spoken, which was many years ago, that uh, you can't sit on the fence, or you, can, you think you can sit on the fence, but if you're sitting on the fence, well, trying to decide, God, I'm going to serve God, go and serve the devil. Uh, the Bible that I read tells me if you're sitting on the fence, you're already serving the devil. And uh, the devil, uh, I know in, when I was uh, here again, I was small at one time, believe it or not. Uh, in uh, youth training, this is, we used to sing, the devil is, you don't have to worry about me singing, but I'll just say the word. We used to say the devil is a slow fox. If I could catch him, I would put him in a box, lock that box and throw away the key. And I remember as a small child, for all the dirty tricks he played on me. And then we say now, and then we would sing now, glad I got converted. This is a small child we were taught that song. And here again, 64 years and 11 months and a few days, I still remember that. That goes back to show us how important it is that as a, get those children as a, uh, when they're young and train them up. Because the Bible does says if we train them up, then it'll never leave them. I'm a perfect example of that because as old as I am, it's still, it's just as uh, fresh today as it was back when, as I said, when I was a little boy. Psalms 139, uh, 9 says, If I take the wings in the morning and, the, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Uh, that was verse uh, Verse 10, which she, the prompters showed us there as well. David stretches his imagination to find a place where he, he, he could flee if he wanted to run. As I said, you can run, but you can't hide. Fortunately for us, he could not find a place. Morning here refers to the east. Uttermost part refers to the west. In other words, for, as far as from the east is from the west, all that in between we may think we can hide, but we can't hide from God. If we hold, uh, if we hold on to God's hand, uh, he will lead us into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms 23 and verse 3. I remember as a child in third grade in school, guess what we were, were taught we had to memorize? The 23rd Psalm. But uh, can't do that this day and time in school. You know, there's also no prayer in school. Uh, that was done away with, I think, when, when I was, when I was uh, still a student there. But uh, I saw a sticker many years ago that said this, as long as there's tests in school, there'll be prayer in school. And that's the case, is it, too. Tell you about the situation. There was many. Uh, the Lord blessed me on my career, the schools I, were at, I was at. Um, uh, we had some things happen that, that, that were bad, you know, a broken arm, broken wrist or something like that. But the good Lord never let anything bad like we saw in the news happen. And one of the things is that uh, uh, the schools that I were at, uh, being an elementary principal, uh, most of those teachers were ladies. And those ladies... Every, I don't know of a one that in my career uh, as a principal at uh, the three schools that I was that didn't go to church or didn't know God. And I could feel their prayers every day. As a matter of fact, uh, there were some days going to school, uh, and I'm not saying this in bragging ways, but this is how the Lord dealt with me on the way to school. Uh, there would be ways, uh, especially I remember... Uh, uh, going or when I was Wasborough, uh, there was days I, I don't know how I got to school. And the reason why I started praying 
amongst myself, sometimes I did out loud. Not Here again, I'm not having pride in that. I'm just showing you that the Lord blessed me on the way to school. And as a result, uh, as I said, we had uh, broken bones or whatever, but we never had nothing major. And that's because the Lord had his shield of protection over us. Another thing I forgot to tell you, uh, I'm also a member of the school board. My wife told me uh, after I retired, I, and I mentioned about uh, being a school board member, she says, you're re- realizing you're getting that out of the frying pan and into the fire, not knowing COVID would come along. Um, but the thing about it is, the Lord is, uh, this is my 11th year being on the Ware County School Board. Uh, my ear still gets chewed off, and I still uh, get words at me that, as a principal, it's really no different there. But uh, the Lord has blessed us as well. The Lord has blessed us as, uh, at the Board of Education. We had no idea this, this uh, COVID, this nut is sent from the depth, from the, the, the deepest part of hell, that's what has come. He's tried to affect schools, but more importantly, he's tried to, he, the devil has tried to affect church attendance. And uh, schools, I mean, it's just uh, prayer. Where County Board of Education, each meeting that we have, we always have prayer. Uh, we used to have a pastor when we had the regular meeting, but now we have one of, one of our, there's seven board members, we, one of the seven of us will pray each uh, each time we meet. Now, in some places in Georgia, that's not allowed. Uh, and at, f- at football games, we still have prayer. You go to some stadiums in, in Georgia, that's not allowed. So God has really blessed us and blessed Ware County. God has worse, uh, blessed Ware County uh, system as well. We, he's blessed this church. As I said earlier, he's blessed me more than he's blessed anybody in this, in this room. Because one day, uh, with all this little knowledge that I had as, as a little person, and as I said, I, one time I was a little person, uh, that uh, at 12 years old, he tugged on my heart as, at 12 years old. And I, had, uh, I went down to an altar prayer. That's when I first gave my heart and my soul to Jesus. But you know, those old teenage years, rebellion, I mean, it's teenagers and a little different today, but they're still back in the 1970s. I was a little on the rebellious side. Uh, but the fact is, the Lord would thump my heart, the Holy Spirit would thump my heart from time to time. I knew I was doing wrong. I knew I was doing wrong. Because he kept thumping me. And looking back now, I thank the good Lord that he was thumping my heart and my soul. Because that meant that he was still dealing with me. And I, 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 you know, looking back, as I said, he's blessed me more than he's blessed anybody else. But I've had ups and downs just like, like many people. But all the time, I knew that inner stuff that I learned as a small child was still in there. And uh, once I got... Once I can get me, myself, and I out of the way uh, and turn it over to the Lord, He don't make mistakes. I know it's hard for some of y'all to believe, but I, you know, when I try to fix things, I make mistakes. Uh, but every time the Lord fixes a mistake, it's there for good. It's there for good. God's uh, Psalms 139 and 11, it says... If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the light shall be light about me. And I'll go ahead and read uh, verse 12 as, 12 as well. As well. Uh, Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night uh, shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. In other words, it doesn't matter day, and, day or night. God still knows where we're at. God sees us. He sees everything we do. And he sees everything we think as well. You don't say, you know, and I know sometimes over the years I've said, oops, uh, uh, the devil made me do it or whatever. 
the devil didn't make me do it. I did that on my own. If I probably said or thought something. Here again, like Brother Danny says, if somebody cuts you off when you're driving, uh, sometimes you want to do more than you do. But you have that thought. And here again, the Holy Spirit of thumping says, now, now, you know better than to do that. Am I right? Yes. Or I'm the only one that does that too. God sees all that takes place in darkness as well as the light. God sees clearly in darkness, as I said, as well as light. Verse 130, uh, chapter 139, verses 13, verse 13 and 14. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me, me in, my mom, in my mother's womb. If you'll go on to 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. In other words, what has happened here is the fact that uh, it should be no surprise that God knows us completely. God knows everything. He knows uh, us fully because he made us. Uh, it says in there, the part of that verse, covered me in my mother's womb, could be translated, wove my parts together. David concludes this by that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This was in the time, David's time. He, they didn't know near as much about a, chi, a, a baby being born, so on and so forth. But with the inside of God, he knew that he, uh, David knew at that time that, that God had made us and God, that God makes all of our parts is one of the words that came up when I was studying. He made all of our parts there. And even though we have machines this day and time, that uh, can see, you know, from where there's just a heartbeat on up to uh, all, nine months there. All during that, if you ever, have you ever, all during that, God is in complete control. As uh, Brother Richard we said, uh, said Sunday, we didn't come from, uh, what did, how did you say it, the uh, quagmire? I can't remember that word, but... We came, came, we didn't come, as, I'll use what he says, we didn't come from monkeys, basically, is what he said. But we didn't come that quagmire that a science will tell us there. And I have a story about that another time when I was in college. I had our science professor, atheist. But uh, I got through that class. Here again, my mouth wanted to open. But the, here again, the Lord blessed me that. But when you think about it, the birth, I mean, conception to birth of a child, uh, if you don't believe in any other miracles, that is a miracle. Because we know that there's so much, so much that can take, go wrong. But the Lord knew us before we were even born. And uh, when we draw our last breath, if we have that relationship with the Lord, He's going to know us uh, while we make our way to heaven. I don't, I can speak, I think I can speak for all of y'all. We all want to go to heaven, don't we? But the only way we can't go through Buddha, we can't go through uh, all the, those other religions, the only way that we can get through heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And David, when we mention, when we take a look at these verses that David had written, you know, David was a man... After God's own heart, he made mistakes. But when he made mistakes, God thumped that old heart and he would repent there. And I thank the good Lord that we can, if we do make mistakes, all we've got to do is say, Lord, please forgive me. And he is willing and he will be, he's willing and able to forgive us. Now, does he want us to go and do it again? No, no. But he does forgive us. One, the, uh, as, I, as I'm closing there, i got a few other verses there, but one of the things that stood out in my mind when I was studying this, that laid out on my heart, this was laid on my heart. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, no matter what we think, God knows everything about us. God knows what we do. Even before it comes out of our mouth. Um, I just thank the good Lord I thank God for sending his son uh, so that we might have that relationship with him. 
I thank the I thank the God I thank God for the whole, sending the Holy Spirit that tugs on our heart or our soul when we may say or do things we shouldn't. But of all these verses that we took a look at, the thing that stood out in my mind is uh, we may run, but we cannot hide. God knows everything about us. He knows how many hairs I have on my head. Uh, a lot less than what I had when I first started uh, teaching and being principal. But the Lord knows how many they are, don't he? Don't he? Hopefully you got something out of this. The Lord laid on my heart that, uh, that uh, uh, this psalm, psalm of thanksgiving, uh, we should always have a heart of thanksgiving. If we have a relationship with the Lord the way we should, we will have a heart of thanksgiving. I appreciate you listening to me. If you'll bow your head, we'll close in prayer. Don't forget, we have a deacons meeting right after this. The Lord has come before you uh, this evening. We want to thank you, Lord, for being the awesome God that you are. We want to thank you, Lord, uh, for sending your son uh, here on earth to die on the cross to for, for the forgiveness of our sin. We want to thank you also, God, for sending the Holy Spirit that will touch us, lead us, and guide us and direct us in what we should do. Most of all, God, we want to thank you for being God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.